Welcome to the 214th Commencement Ceremony of the University of Western States. My name is Dr. Rosalia Messina, and I'm the Executive Vice President in your Master of Ceremonies for this virtual event. While we cannot be together in person for this event, our graduates' achievements are no less impressive, and their future is no less bright. This event will be remembered as one of celebration, marking the culmination of a significant journey of transformation and transition, and signifying new beginnings. Graduates, you have been transformed into people who can succeed in your complex lives. While addressing the needs of your patients, clients, and communities, you will soon transition into a new phase of your professional and personal lives. Friends and family, Thank you for supporting your loved ones while they have realized their goals and aspirations. Their success is largely due to your care and support. And now, Dr. Amanda Armington, clinical educator in the Doctor of Chiropractic program, will provide us with a salutation. Good morning. Graduates, you made it to the end of a path you've been on for some time. Some days it may have felt like you were trudging along at a snail's pace unable to catch up or move faster. Others, it might have felt like the easiest sprint to complete your next challenge. Regardless of the speed, your strength has never wavered. You find yourself at commencement today. Young Pueblo said, they asked her, what is the key to saving the world? She answered, you, you are the key. Heal yourself know yourself, make yourself whole and free, release all limits so that your love can flow unconditionally for yourself and for the world. This will open up the heaven of your heart completely and it will guide you without fail. Graduates, you did it. Your future is bright and shiny. We're so proud of you. Thank you, Dr. Armington. Our commencement speaker's accomplishments are too numerous and profound to adequately address in a brief introduction. However, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Sunny Ramaswamy. Dr. Ramaswamy currently serves as the president and CEO of the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities, an agency that accredits 160 institutions of higher education in our region. The Northwest Commission is recognized by the U.S. Department of Education and the Non-Governmental Council for Higher Education as an authority on higher education quality, integrity, and effectiveness. Dr. Ramaswamy earned his Bachelor's of Science in Agriculture and a Master's of Science in Agricultural Entomology from the University of Agricultural Sciences in Bangalore, India. He earned his PhD in entomology from Rutgers University and completed an executive management development program from Harvard University. From 1997 to 2009, Dr. Wamasami held a faculty and leadership roles in the Department of Entomology at Kansas State University, the Purdue University College of Agriculture, the College of Agricultural Sciences at Oregon State University, and the Oregon Agricultural Experiment Station. In 2012, Dr. Ramaswamy was appointed by President Barack Obama to serve as the director of the National Institute of Food and Agriculture at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. In his role, Dr. Ramaswamy provided leadership and direction in the formulation of national policies to support research, education, and agricultural advisory services. Dr. Ramaswamy has a particular interest in equity and inclusiveness in higher education. He is passionate about student success. His hobbies and interests include crossword puzzles, reading, and riding his Harley Davidson motorcycle. Please join me in offering a warm welcome to Dr. Sunny Ramaswamy. Thank you very much, Dr. Messina. It is an honor for me to be here today to help celebrate the graduation of the summer 2021 graduates of the University of Western States. Chair Ron Rogers, President Joe Bramhall, distinguished guests, parents, alumni, faculty, staff, and of course graduates. It is a distinct honor for me to be here today 
to help celebrate your graduation. Congratulations. Today is a celebration of your accomplishments. Graduates, you have invested long hours of study. And at the same time, you've likely had to keep a job, maybe multiple jobs. You've cared for families. You've cared for your communities. Today is your day, graduates. It's an honor for me again to join you in celebration, celebrating your accomplishments. As I stand here today, I'm reminded of my own graduation a few years ago. A few years ago. And uh, Joan Baez was the commencement speaker. Some of you probably know Joan Baez, maybe you've heard her sing. She is an inspiring speaker and an inspiring singer. And uh, she is a change agent, as some of you know. At the graduation ceremony, this is at Rutgers University, going back a few years, a few decades, I should say, she sang for commencement, which was kind of cool. And the song itself had a, a tremendous message in it as well. So that was my graduation. And today you've got me to share with you some, some thoughts, some words. When President Brimhall invited me to speak, I was quite honored. Thank you very much, President Brim, Brimhall, for inviting me to speak here today. I have been given get a lot of thought over the last several weeks since he invited me. And I've been thinking about the message I want to leave you with as you commence on this journey. We call it commencement, as you know, not just graduation. We call it commencement because this is the beginning of the next phase of your lives. The fact that the University of Western States prepares graduates for careers in healthcare got me thinking about the state of healthcare in America. The wealthiest country in the world with the most advanced healthcare system, and yet we fall short. We fall short because we have significant inequity, inequities and disparities in health care. I'm pretty certain you know about this, particularly for people of color and poor people. And of course, the COVID pandemic only exacerbated the same. And then all of us know, on top of it, 2020 happened. 2020 has been weighing on me. And I'm sure it's been weighing on you as well. We all probably would rather forget, but we cannot. It's the year, as you know, America went through cataclysmic events. A seminal moment in our nation's history, I think. The pandemic, of course, has affected all, us all permanently, like happened with the Spanish flu a century ago. Also, to many of us across America, 2020 is also about the wanton killings of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and many, many, many others. Just in that one year, 2020, and coming into early 2021, there were almost over 150 individuals that were killed killed by police, unfortunately. And of course, 2020 is also when we saw the Black Lives Matter protests. The protests. We also saw police brutality. We saw the riots. We saw violence. And of course, we saw, all of us saw the images on television. We saw images from Portland. We saw images from Seattle, Washington from Washington, D.C., from London, from Rio. And some of you graduates, some of the students here at the University of Western States, some of the faculty and staff likely were in the midst of these protests as well. I'm sure this has impacted you very significantly and will likely have lifelong impacts. Lifelong impacts, these moments that we have in history that have lifelong impacts. I'm reminded of our daughter. Our daughter was a student 
at New York University when 9-11 happened, that fateful day when terrorists flew those two airplanes, crashed them, I should say, into the World Trade Center. Our daughter being a student at New York University on 9-11, at about 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time, she was in a class, she told me she was in an English literature class on Broadway, the street that is, and she was in class just a few blocks from the World Trade Center. And the events of that day and following over the last couple of decades has had immeasurable impact on all of us across the globe and students that were there at that moment at New York University, including our daughter. So it's changed everybody's lives, as you know, like 2020 and the images that we've seen, the riots that we've seen, the protests that we've seen, the Black Lives Matter efforts that have been going on. All of these are going to have long-lasting, maybe permanent impacts and have changed. And today, 2021, on this very important day for you, your graduation, I'm absolutely certain the events of the last year and a half have had an impact on you. We've had contentious conversations about equity, about diversity, about inclusion, and we've had all these disparities, the racial and class disparities that we have in America. Hunger, poverty, incarceration, environmental racism, redlining, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, negative health outcomes. And where do we see this most? In those that are disempowered and dispossessed, particularly people that are poor, people that are black, indigenous, and people of color. That's where we see the most disparities in America, the health disparities, an area that you work in. We see that in our racial ethnic groups. We see it amongst our poor people. And the history that we've got in America as well. The history of blacks, indigenous people, people of color, and our poorest communities being used as guinea pigs in the area of healthcare, in quotes. Remember the Tuskegee experiments that we saw decades ago, a century ago. And then, of course, the eugenics experiments that we saw here in America as well. All of these are part of our history. And these continue to have an impact on us as a nation. We've seen the ugliness of racism and hate crimes that impact, our health, impact health outcomes. And of course, as I said earlier, the COVID pandemic has only exacerbated these health disparities. We collectively, as Americans, we spend $12,000 per capita on healthcare, the highest in the world. And yet, the disparities grow. And yet, the disparities grow. So this is the context for you on this very important day as you commence in the next phase, in the, in the journey that you're going to be embarking on. And, and I hope your calling, your calling working in this area of health care, your role in helping address the ugly impacts of racism and social injustice on health care and health outcomes is critically important. I'd like to digress for a moment and tell you a bit about myself and when, why and when I became passionate about equity, diversity, and inclusion. I came to America in 1976, January 13, 1976 to be exact. I came to America to attend school at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Summer of 1976, we were naive and we'd just gotten out of Vietnam and things looked pretty good. The future looked fantastic. I had the opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C. to attend a conference. And uh, 
I was just blown away by the sights and sounds of Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, and particularly the memorials. I recall getting goosebumps seeing the Lincoln Memorial. The Lincoln Memorial, some of you have likely been to Washington, D.C., likely seen the memorials, likely seen the Lincoln Memorial as well. If you recall, on the walls, you've got excerpts from Abraham Lincoln's speeches. One of my favorites is the Gettysburg Address. The one indelible, memorable line for me is the very first line of the Gettysburg Address. It starts, I'll remind you, I'm sure many of you have read this or heard this, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth a new nation conceived in liberty, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. That all men are created equal. And then I had the opportunity to go to the National Archives after that. And I got to see, and remember, I'm fresh off the boat at that time. And I get goosebumps reading the speech. And then I go to the National Archives, and I got to read the Declaration of Independence. And again, the preamble, I'll remind you, to the Declaration of Independence contains a single inspiring passage. And it goes on to say, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal with certain unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The key words in both the Declaration of Independence and the Gettysburg Address are all men are created equal. And remember, when Abraham Lincoln speaks to this at Gettysburg, and my wife and I had the privilege of going to Gettysburg as well, to the battlefield, it is one of the worst locations for the war between states that we had. Brothers against brothers, families against families. And it was about the emancipation of blacks, of the slaves in America. That's what it was all about. Talks about that all men are created equal. However, and, and, you know, America has always aspired, we as a nation, have always aspired to the idea of equality of everyone. Our approach, however, has been fraught, fraught throughout our nation's history. Right from the beginning, it's been fraught. For many, as you know, equality has been out of reach. And so here we are today, 2021. The situation is still fraught. What we saw, we still see, even today, here in Portland, Oregon, even today we see it. The protests, the riots, part of it is still about equality. Part of it is still about equity. Part of it is still about inclusion. It's still out of, out of reach for a lot of our fellow citizens. We continue to have contentious and sometimes violent interactions between those who want change and those who want to maintain the status quo. We continue to see the isolation, increased incarceration, homelessness, hunger, poverty, the persistent uh, structural racism, infringement on voting rights, hate crimes, and violence on the rise across America and here certainly in Portland, Oregon as well. The question for each of you graduates and for each one of us, all of us collectively is, what's your role, what's our role in addressing the fraught situation, particularly the health disparities? Because you're going to be commencing your lives in a helping deal with health care here in America. Why should you care about equity? Why should you as graduates care about equity? Why should I, as an individual, a member of this community here in America, care about equity? How will you show up in the world to address this fraught situation, solve it, 
Think about the social costs to America. If we don't do something about it, if we continue to throw people in prison, we're going to pay a lot more as members of society than if we were to deal with these issues up front. It's, going to, it's a lot cheaper for us to ensure that our young people get education, that we protect the interests of everybody, that we offer them opportunity, that they're part of our construct that we've got. So there's also an opportunity cost, as you might well imagine, for individuals and communities. So my question for you is, what will you graduates do to promote equity, justice, and equality for all people? As it's enshrined, by the way, in federal and state laws and regulations. And some of you are likely religious. In every major religion in the world, and particularly in the Judeo-Christian tradition, we talk about the hallmark of humanity. I am my brother's keeper. Shouldn't that be something that speaks to us, that I am my brother's keeper? I've got to do everything I can to protect the interests of the less fortunate. That's what it's all about. For all of us, you don't have to be religious to think about this idea of being my brother's keeper. So why is equity and diversity and inclusion important? Why should we care about this, about solving the problem of health disparities? Why should you, graduates, care about this? I'll remind you of the University of Western States motto, which states, for the good of the patient, it is the start of your contributions to the well-being of others, for the good of the patients. Today, as you finish up your graduation ceremony, you'll be taking your oath, the University of Western States' oath, and it has multiple phrases in it, but two phrases strike a chord in me. The first one is, the oath you're gonna take will say, you will say, dedicate myself to the promotion of health. And secondly, commit myself to caring for others, regardless of their means. These are not just phrases to be uttered, but to live and to act. I want to ask each of you, are you ready to live the oath that you take? Are you ready to act on the oath that you take? Collectively, all of us, everyone here, gathered here for the, your graduation ceremony, your parents, the alumni, faculty and staff, the board members, the distinguished guests, other students, we all, and society, we all have a role to play to create the America we want. The America where, as our Declaration of Independence says, as the Gettysburg Address said, where every individual is able to exercise their right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, where everybody has an equal opportunity. You, the graduates, have a significant opportunity and key role to play. I'm sure you'll make mistakes, no doubt about it. All of us make mistakes and learn along the way. I'm reminded of Miles Davis's uh, wonderful saying, do not fear mistakes. There are none. Take risks, be engaged, question the status quo. Show up every day, help transform society. A society that you and I, call and I can say we're proud of. I call upon you. Join me in helping eliminate injustice and the systemic inequities, particularly the health inequities. You have a role to play. You have a hand that you can offer. Imagine, act. Imagination and purposeful action are desperately needed now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, now. As you're taking that oath, I hope you resolve saying, yes, I'm in, count me in, I'm going to do what I need to do. I will imagine the best possibility. I will act to make that imagination come to fruition. Do it with kindness, fairness, and empathy. As I wrap up, 
I want to celebrate your efforts. And I celebrate your family's efforts. They have sacrificed much. To paraphrase the inimitable Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., as you commence in the next phase of fear of life, I hope you'll join me in working to create a small bend in the moral arc of the universe. I want you to join me in creating a small bend in the moral arc of the universe. As Dr. King said, do what's right. Thank you very much. Good luck to you and stay safe. Thank you, Dr. Ramaswamy. And now I invite Dr. Joseph Brenpal, president of the university, to provide a special presentation. The conferring of an honorary degree is a special designation of accomplishment that goes beyond the ordinary. It is awarded to an individual who stands out as particularly dedicated with achievement in significant areas of human endeavor and outstanding service to the university, the state, the nation, and humanity. The honorary degree that we will confer today is the Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, awarded for exceptional service to the university and to the community at large. The recipient of this degree receives a special diploma, an academic hood with the University of Western States colors, and by tradition, becomes a member of the 2021 graduating class. Dr. Sunny Ramaswamy, as a visionary leader and innovative consensus builder, you have inspired excellence among students, peers, faculty members, and leaders across the spectrum of higher education. You have steadfastly endeavored to ensure academic quality and institutional integrity and to promote diversity and student achievement in higher education. Your efforts to demonstrate and sustain the highest educational standards have benefited tens of thousands of learners throughout the world. With your attainment of a PhD degree in entomology and a Master of Science degree in agricultural entomology, you have made prominent contributions to the fields of biological science and agriculture. As President Barack Obama's appointee to the United States Department of Agriculture, you served a six-year term as the director of the National Institute of Food and Agriculture, providing essential leadership to catalyze transformative discoveries, education, and engagement to solve societal challenges. For your unwavering devotion to teaching, learning, mentoring, leading, and serving others, and for your consistent dedication to the core values of curiosity, inclusiveness, and equity. University of Western States is proud to confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. Dr. Sunny Ramaswamy, please join me to accept your honorary degree. Thank you, Dr. Brimhall and Dr. Ramaswamy. It is now my pleasure to invite the student speaker to present the student address. To my fellow graduates of the class of 2021, congratulations. This truly is a significant day in all of our lives. And on behalf of the class of 2021, I want to share my deepest sense of gratitude to all the faculty and administration for the ways that you have encouraged us to grow and gone the extra mile. Thank you for the support when we didn't think we could do it anymore. Your care and guidance have in fact made all the difference. On behalf of the class of 2021, I also wanna thank those who have supported this student body over these past years. So to all the parents and siblings, all of the spouses, children and friends who have had to endure our stressed out finals weeks and our sleep deprived mood swings, thank you. Thank you for helping support our dreams and at other times, just put up with us. As we turn our eyes to the future, looking ahead at what is exciting and also potentially daunting, I wanna offer a word of encouragement and a challenge to my fellow classmates. 
Over the past several years, we've been reading, writing, reflecting, discussing, and developing all kinds of skills to allow us to become proficient and competent in our settings. But in the midst of all that content and a culture that is saturated with access to information, I want to encourage you, class of 2021, to gain more than just knowledge and develop more than just skill. If you truly want to have a significant impact on another person's life, if you want to live a life of significance yourself, then information and skill alone won't suffice. As the poet T.S. Eliot wrote, where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? It's tempting to believe that the promise of a better tomorrow can be fulfilled only by information and skill. But oftentimes we overlook the necessity for wisdom for wisdom is what tells us not just what the right thing to do is, but when to do it, to what extent it ought to be done, and why it's good that we do so. As Eliot notices, we can lose our ability to be wise if we confuse knowledge for wisdom. Developing wisdom, then, doesn't come from a textbook. It comes from experience and the hard work of the examined life. We cannot lose sight of the fact that our world is in desperate need of individuals who are wise and use that wisdom with care to employ to those who need it most. This leads to my final thought, an exhortation for my classmates. It was given to me by a professor years ago and it's rather simple, but not easy. Serve well. Whatever context or role you find yourself in in the future, serve well. Use that role and your abilities. Cultivate wisdom to serve those you meet because a life of service is a life of significance. To the class of 2021, congratulations, we did it. And now, Dr. Ron Rogers, Chair of the UWS Board of Trustees, will share greetings from the board. Graduates, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, it is my absolute honor to extend congratulations to you and to celebrate this day with you. When you first came to the University of Western States those many months ago, you brought with you, I believe, a heart for the hurting, and a sincere desire to help people. During your time at Western States, you've gained knowledge, skills, and wisdom to help you help people. Today, as you prepare to leave your training grounds, as you gaze out from beneath your tasseled caps, you'll see a world that's filled with hurting people people hurting from injuries, illnesses, infirmities of aging, addiction, abuse, neglect. And as you enter your chosen field, you will take with you all of the knowledge, wisdom, and skills you have gained. But take with you every day that characteristic that you brought with you on your very first day through the doors of UWS, your heart for hurting people and your sincere desire to help them. Once again, graduates, congratulations to you. And as my newest colleagues, may I wish you a lifetime of meaningful and rewarding service. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. And now I invite the President of the Faculty Senate, Dr. Brent Marshall, to offer greetings from the faculty. Greetings to the graduates of the 214th commencement of the University of Western States. On behalf of the faculty of the Colleges of Chiropractic and Graduate Studies, we express our warmest wishes and best of luck for your future endeavors. Through your endurance, you have conquered your academic goals. Soon, you will enter your respective professional fields. While at UWS, you have gained knowledge and skills which you will no doubt use to great effect. 
We look forward with earnest as you go forth and help your communities to ease the burden of injury and illness in your patients and clients. Congratulations to the graduates of the 214th commencement. Thank you, Dr. Marshall. I invite Dr. Dana Sims, Vice President of Academic Affairs and Provost to present the degree candidates. I now present to you the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Human Nutrition and Functional Medicine. Armin Agajanyan, Helia Akbari, Marnie Lynn Anderson, Brittany Silverleaf Anderson, Courtney Lynn Brady, Marla Brown, Rachel E. Burkholz, Vanessa Burnham, Kelsey Lee Bouchong, Andrea M. Carosco, Jeannie Cherubini, Alicia Elizabeth Cote, Ellen Davenport, Hannah C. Del Garcio, Ryan Diaz, Rachel Dickham, Aaron Kinsey Dahl, Monica Echeverry, Barrett Gifford, Kate Godley, Michael Jeremy Gontarek, Skylar R. Hand, Samantha Height, Callie Johnson, Megan Justice, Pamela Klein, Ashley Bully Koch, Ashley Conzelia, Kristen Kufel, Mary Kwok, Jesse Kyle Laframboise, Janet Hawkins Lottie, Alicia Levier, Monty C. Lindmeyer, Jessica Lynn Loveless, Chelsea Lovell, Sally McLean, Brooke McGregor, Stephanie McNamara, Ikra Mosin, Tamara Myers, Sarah Niminski, Francois Noel Ditelli, Natalie Nicole Olson, Lynn Ann Paul, Amy Palinelli, Weston Petrosky, Jasmine Polly, Cheryl Reeves, Emily Redder, Crystal Riccardi, Catherine M. Richland, Yaleen Roland Rios, Nicole Rios, Sarah Roder, Katie Salmon, Eric Conrad Schultz, Rima Shakur, Inkiru Shevitz, Agata Sliwek, Jessica Nomi, Brianna Strodbeck, Stephanie Strudley, Alicia Swanson, Emily Thompson, Liana Jiza Neves Vargas, Jacob Vonfeld, Kristen Wagner, Aaron 
Westmoreland. Tammy Marie Yak. I now present to you the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Sport and Performance Psychology. Shelby Aker. Kelsey Alderman. Nicole Jane Beardsley. Kimberly Campos. Miles Cassidy Rice. Jose Miguel Contreras. Kelly Devlin. Brett Cotti. Presley Lewandowski. Brent Pruitt. Natasha Raya. Shauna Schuster. Gary Stephen Trottier Jr. Nalina Baladen. Laura A. Waller. I now present to you the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Sports Medicine. Becca Peterson. Jamie Shorts. I now present the candidates for the Doctor of Education degree in Clinical Mental Health Counseling. Benjamin D. Steele. I now present the candidates for the Doctor of Education degree in Sport and Performance Psychology. Dane Anderson. Michael Darren Champion. Bo. Dylan Leaf, Christine Marie Simler, Leslie Takaki Sanchez, Malachi Thompson III. I now present the candidates for the Doctor of Chiropractic degree. Christina D. Adams, Lauren Adamski, Taya Bartell, Adam Bell, Derek Berdusco, Austin Blanchin, Michaela Bokan, Amir Banyanpur, James Bradley, Sanvir Kar Brar, Austin Campo, Amit Singh Shahal, Daniel Charlotte, Amber Chong, Tim Chow, Eric Kalobong, Christian Kotuna, Nicholas Krivici, Sarah Catherine Crockett, Leah Dash, Ford Davidson, Matthew Deutscher, David Deerdorf, Kyle William Duarte, Kristen Dudek, Chelsea Durling, Tyler Epp, Kayla Evans, Tyler Faust, Spencer David Freeman, Jordan Gillis, Elia Glazunov, Taylor Goldberg, Jesse Gordon, Philip Hamilton, Allie Harland, Emily Marie Haugen, Elizabeth Hine. Emily Hine, Samantha Hendricks, Ethan Henneberry, Zachary Higgins, Jameson Dean 
Hodge. Skyler Horton. Trevor Jackson. Caitlin Jennings. Rin Masao Johnson. Caitlin Jones. Michael Cam. Glenn Charles Kaysen. Lauren J. Kendrick. Brianna Kenning. Tyler D. Kidman. Isaac Conrad. Tyler Lamberant. Felix Lasselle Hollis. Nicholas Martin. Austin Ryan Martinez. Aaron Minard. Marcus Moore. Joshua Robert Moore. Mariah Mulligan. Trevor Norman Nelson. Jordan Elise Adele Newman. Grant Douglas Peters. Danielle Pettit. Catherine Alexi Tirana Reyes. David Rong. Enderpreet Samra. Emma Rose Scaro. Carter Schultz. Courtney Shamro. Rebecca Shapiro. Nikhil Sharma. Kyle Smart. Spencer Smith. Alan Starkey. Dylan Souls. Toby Swanson. Carissa Tobin. Megan Tribelko. Gabriel Tavetan. Madison Vandeviver. Chloe Vasilakis Laws. Jay White. Joey Wisdom. Joseph Yang. And now Dr. Brimhall will confer the degrees. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the State of Oregon, I hereby respectively confer upon you the degrees of Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, Doctor of Education, and Doctor of Chiropractic, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities hereto. Graduates, congratulations. Please may take a moment now to acknowledge your family and friends and thank them for their support. And now I invite all graduates of University of Western States to affirm the University of Western States oath. I take this oath as a graduate of the University of Western States. I will respect the dignity and protect the confidences of those I serve. I will uphold the highest professional, ethical, and moral standards in all of my actions. I dedicate myself to the promotion of health, the prevention of illness, and the alleviation of suffering. I will collaborate with other healthcare professionals to promote health and wellness. I will continue learning throughout my life so that I may provide for the good of those I serve. I commit myself to caring for others regardless of their means with compassion, honesty, and integrity. May these principles guide, strengthen, and inspire me. So help me God. Members of the audience, friends, guests, and family members, please join me in congratulating our newest graduating class of University of Western States. 
would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Ramaswamy for being our commencement speaker today, to all of the members of the platform party, to the dedicated staff members who organized this event and made it happen, <clears throat> and to everyone for participating in this ceremony. Graduates, today you have reached a milestone, and you have accomplished this while enduring a global pandemic. In the face of unpredictable changes and uncertainty, you move forward and continued your journey. I have thought about what we can learn from this past year of unexpected change. What lessons are there for us to understand? Life by its very nature is change. There are so many aspects of living that we not, do not control. Things like the weather, global economics, natural disasters, and yes, pandemics. All of these factors have impacted humans since the beginning of history. And yet there are a few things over which we do have control. Each of us decides how we individually respond or react when faced with difficulty. We cannot control the behavior of others, but we always have the opportunity to choose kindness and curiosity instead of anger and judgment. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is possible. As Pema Chodron cancels us, when things fall apart, each one of us has the capacity to decide how we respond. Acquiring more knowledge and developing wisdom are two of the few certainties in life one of the few things of growth we have control of. Developing wisdom, learning, studying, and experiencing life do not fall upon us by chance, but by choice. We cannot learn that which we think we already know. As our knowledge increases, our awareness of what we still don't know continually expands. We must strive to keep our minds open. As we celebrate how far we have come, we can also be humbled and curious about the distance that looms in front of us. There is no point of final arrival, only a journey to which there is no end. Keep learning, keep asking, keep discovering. Imagination and creativity are powerful tools that serve us in navigating our unique journeys, exploring new theories that challenge our beliefs, realizing new ways to measure our life, embracing the joy of being wrong, and cherishing the wonder of discovering a better path. These are all within our control. Let's not define ourselves by our beliefs, our jobs, or our theories. Let's create identities based on what we value. It's not about what we are, it's about who we are. Here's the path forward. Remain curious. Ask questions, even if they challenge what we already know, what we think we already know. Study topics outside of our expertise. Learn new skills. Engage imagination. Nurture creativity. Take time to laugh and play. Choose kindness and compassion. This is our continuing adventure. Graduates, I wish each of you the very best. Thank you for allowing me to share in your journey during this brief time. I invite each of you to stay connected as you move forward. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Brimhall. I now invite Dr. Daniel Redwood, Director of the Human Nutrition and Functional Medicine Program, to offer closing remarks. We close this ceremony with words from two Nobel laureates who bring us food for thought about healing and about forgiveness. The first is Albert Schweitzer, who was a physician, theologian, and musician who won the Nobel Peace Prize back in the 1950s. Schweitzer said, don't blame, forgive. All healing is self-healing. The second is from a recent recipient 
of the Nobel Prize for Literature, Bob Dylan, who wrote and sang, Remember, when you're out there trying to heal the sick, that you must always first forgive them. Graduates, may your years in the healing arts bring you the deepest fulfillment. Thank you, Dr. Redwood. And thanks to everyone who helped organize this fine event. A special thanks to Celtic Muse for providing the music for the ceremony. Thank you for joining us. Here's wishing you congratulations and a wonderful journey ahead. Thank you.